Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to a new episode of Entropia Content. <laughs> now, today's episode, we're going to mix it up, or we won't. We'll go and finish the crafting run. I think that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my tried, trusted, and true crafting terminal, and we'll, we'll finish up the run there. Camp Crunk, home base. Today on the vape menu, I picked up some ghost train haze my favorite strain from the government this was the first strain that ever changed my mind about the government strains I used to think that the government weed sucked but then I tried ghost train haze and I was like holy fuck the government weeds way better than I ever imagined so it's actually my favorite strain it's a strain that I tried growing and it's funny because when I looked up the strain online, I came across a website that was saying that there's been a mix-up with Ghost Train Haze. And that there's two strains, at least, that have been going under the same name. So I was like, okay, well that will cause some confusion right off the bat, right? Like, when you say you're getting Ghost Train Haze, it could be two different kinds right off the bat. So anyways, the, the weed I grew did have a unique taste. And I was like, maybe it is Ghost Train Haze. But then a friend of mine at Games Night showed me some of his government weed. He's like, hey, look, I got a really good strain. And I'm like, what is it? And he's like, it's Ghost Train Haze. I'm like, yeah, that's the kind that I grew. Let's compare it. So I compared the smell to his and what I grew. And it was nothing similar. So I was like, what the fuck? It's not even close to the same. So maybe his was the opposite strain. So anyways, I picked up a Ghost Train Haze by a company called Color. And right off the bat, I noticed there was a problem. Because I ordered a, what is it, a half quarter, an eighth. And it came in this. I'm like, what the fuck? This is a tiny bag. How the hell is a half quarter or 3.5 grams fit in here? Like, is it hash or is it like a pre-roll? It's like I tried to order buds. That's what it showed, was buds. So I opened the bag. The smell is super strong. You know what, sometimes you open a bag and it just fills the whole room sort of thing. Oh, it's these really hard to open bags. It's weird, because like if you open it normally, it'll never open. If you squeeze it together like that, then it does. But man, is it not easy to open. Holy fuck, I'm not even going to be able to open the weed that I was trying to do the show about. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> I'd say it's it says to just take either side and pull it apart, but... Doing that will send the weed flying. Well anyways, if I could open the bag, I smelt it and it smelled super strong. And it was fucking, uh, yeah, I'm just going to cut this bag. God, this is so annoying, I can't open a fucking weed bag. I just opened it like a minute ago, it wasn't this hard. Maybe it wasn't sealed properly. It's weird because it shows little instructions on how to open the bag. But I can't follow what it's saying to do. Twist that. I just want to fucking open the bag. Is that a fucking miracle to ask for? It sucks. It's such a nice bag. I don't want to have to waste it. Could reuse it. If it would fucking open. Well, this is good for childproof, right? The only thing is, a kid with scissors could just fucking cut the bag, no problem. If a kid's going for weed, I'm pretty sure he can get scissors.
So it shows to put your thumb in there and turn it. Well that does not open shit, it just bends the fucking plastic. There we go. Just force it enough and rip the bag right open. There you go, you piece of shit. Alright, well. Got it open. Ripped it open. Oh yeah, this weed reeks like cat litter. You know, like the ammonia from cat litter? It's fucking what it reeks like. With a slight hint of good weed. Oh yeah, and it's already cut up. So it's like pre-cut up weed. It's like I don't want to buy pre-cut up weed. I want the nugs to still be intact. Let's see, did I break the bag or is it fucked? Well, looks like the bag is still okay. I am just pulling it with all my might managed to get it to open. Fuck. So anyways, yeah, that's the first kind of weed I got. But then I did order some trusted, tried and true Atlantis. They had some more Atlantis back in stock. It's actually all Kush 47, or all kinds 47. Now, so I'm hoping, uh... I got another bag of a Ghost Train Haze by a different company, and it was a bigger bag, so I'm hoping it's actual nugs. I don't know, maybe people like the, the smell of cat ammonia or cat litter box material, but personally I don't. I guess maybe it means because the weed is really strong, it would have lots of ammonia in it. It's one of the most common compounds in ammonia, or ammonia in weed. That's why bong water smells so much like piss. It's because ammonia bonds to water. So when you put water in a bong, and the ammonia goes through it from the cannabis, it bonds to the water. So then you're left with water that smells like piss, because it has a whole bunch of ammonia bonded to it. Weed chemistry. <laughs> So that's literally why bong water smells like pit on piss on the carpet. Spill it. Goes down smooth. <laughs> now there's a Cypress Hill song that talks that are used to talk about that or rap about it. Word. <laughs> Yeah, so this bowl is the ghost train haze, but I put in a little dab of my vapor oil into it, fresh out of the, the unit itself. I think the vapor oil does have a shelf life, so you don't want to leave it sitting around forever. I wondered that with Rick Simpson style oil, if it could go bad after a while, or if you could just leave it sitting on a shelf for years. I think, yeah, he probably keeps it in the fridge or freezer too, right? Can't see that stuff lasting forever. Alright, so we are approaching the last under a thousand clicks to go. Which is pretty exciting for me. It seems like this crafting run has been dragging on a bit. One of the bigger ones I've done in a while. For fuck's sakes, did I really get ready to do a show and didn't get a drink? You idiot! <laughs> Alright, there we go. Got some Gatorade. Almost forgot too. Let's do a quick spin for the Bitcoin Casino. 
We're at 135,830. Let's roll. 135,841. Woohoo! Alright, thanks everyone who's been helping. Dear God, what are we up to? Like 56 referrals now helping. 57! Fucking army of 57 people helping the show. Dear God, I don't know what I did to deserve you guys. <laughs> Alright, so thanks again everyone who continues to help with that. Jeez, if you, every 57 people do a free spin, every time an hour passes, <whistles> soon we'll, this show will be raking it in. <laughs> we only need an extra thousand people helping. <laughs> we can do it though, guys. We're getting closer and closer every day. No, I was kind of disappointed with the government's ghost train haze because not only does it smell like ammonia, but it also turned brown. So the weed is still or been stored long enough that it's no longer bright green. But taste wise, it's okay. And it is very dry, so it's not moldy at all. Even though it smells like ammonia. I shouldn't say it only smells like ammonia because it's got a hint of okay smell. So I don't know, for the price, I think the color cannabis was one of the ones that was more affordable. I'll have to check that. Yeah, here we go. It says... Oh, that's why. Okay. Because it says the half quarter of Ghost Train Haze ready to roll. Fuck, it doesn't tell me the price. Isn't that interesting? Eh? It gives you receipt, tells you the amounts, the names, the quantity, and the weight. But not, nothing to do with the price. That's the only thing I needed to know was the price. But that's what they mean by ready to roll, is that it's already broken up weed. Because I was like, here, yeah, maybe it's the cheaper one. So I think it was like $5 a half quarter cheaper. So I don't know, for me, I would rather just go with nugs that are still not broken up, pay a little extra. But at least now I know. I'm fucking ready to roll bags. Nice little bag, but fuck, man. Unless you know how to open it, you're not going to be able to open it. Without scissors or just ripping it open. For If you're looking for a childproof bag, though, this might be it. Other than, like, scissors being able to compromise it. <laughs> but if you're, like, in a wanting to know if your kid got any out of the bag chances are if you see it cut open well yeah then you'll know now I remember I tried that with the cigarette tin they develop for joints it's also childproof so I gave it to my friends one of the games night when they were all drunk I asked if any of them could open it without giving them the instructions how. And nope, none of them could open it. <laughs> it is, uh, it's like the makeup container instructions. You know, I have to squeeze it on both sides and then open it. Instead of just squeezing it on one side, which you would do for most packages that it says. Yeah, and if anyone wants to check out more Entropia cannabis related material, or if you're creating some yourself, feel free to post it on Entropia Cannabis on Reddit. You can even self promote, even though on the Reddit forum somewhere it says you're not supposed to self promote. I was like, really? That's one of the main rules of Reddit? I didn't even know that. I thought that was just group specific. 
So really, when you go into Reddit, you're never supposed to share anything you create. Maybe that's how they get people to create fake accounts, right? Like some companies are looking for more fake accounts. Even though they say they're against fake accounts, they like lots of people signing up to their stuff. I'm sure they're not that upset when a few people slide in under... Right, this is horse shit, man. We've done almost 200 clicks, not a single print. So we got a bail on this one. This terminal is fucked. It's a shame, that's normally my favorite terminal. Alright, we'll have to find another one to use. Fuck, terminal's broken. Hopefully I still got it to work. Now I was kind of hoping we could finish off the crafting run by getting a few good ones and... Looks like even getting one good one now is going to be a stretch because we did like 200 clicks there and didn't get a single print. Should have got like at least five prints. <laughs> Things are loading a bit slow. Maybe it means I should put some stuff in storage. Just like Halloween, you don't want to have all the gifts in your bag. Or treats. If you have too many, people look in and say, hey, this kid doesn't need so much and give you less. Yeah, it was stupid. I shouldn't have converted so much shrapnel to ammo. Should just did 10 peds worth. I really, I wish I could find out what happened to all my, my ammo. Where did I waste it? Must have been one of those missions or one of those things I recorded. I must have recorded where I wasted it. I must have had like good 10, 20 peds worth of ammo. That's how I was surprised I wasted it all without noticing where. Like that's quite a bit to just vanish. Like I've been doing that AI mission for years and saving up the ammo. And it kept going up every time. So I had saved up a huge amount. And then it's just all gone. Go one day to shoot and don't have any ammo, check storage, it's all gone. Yeah, so less than 100 ped here to go. Maybe it's this tool. It's a bad luck tool. I gotta go to the more trusted true refiner. Finding tool makes you look like you're a professional crafter. Now, and players donating some more items to the show yesterday. They're going to trade Terminal One thing and sold it to me for TT price. So I could try selling it at the shop. Can't remember what it was. You'll have to go and check the shop. And I click construct. Did anything happen? No. <laughs> well, 
Now today was nice. Weather was already winter like so we were able to get a shift in. Went and salted people's places. Trained a new employee. It's funny he was training me on some of the stuff because I'm not the greatest with new cell phones. Now I'm so used to having like a back button. This one was like a triangle or something you had to press to go back. Or maybe it was the square. Yeah, I better answer this. One sec, guys. Well, that was close. It didn't pause the crafting run, so when I hit stop and hit stop, it just kept running and crafting. But no global while we were gone. <laughs> now it was just the air duct cleaners. They were calling from India to see if we needed our air ducts cleaned. But our house doesn't have air ducts. Most people hate them when they call, but I used to work for them, so I tend not to hate the company as much. I know what it was like to be calling people and asking them if they want their air ducts cleaned. I don't know if some of the offices are in India, because the one office I was working at was just around the block from my house. I think there was a guy from India that owned it maybe though, so maybe that's why it sounds. Sounds like a call center in India, but it's a Canadian call center with the guy from India that owns it. <laughs> maybe, I don't know. Man, this is like hardcore no prints today, right? Really shouldn't have came to this terminal. This one's a bad luck one too. I should go to the tangerine maybe. We'll try 120 clicks. If no prints, we gotta book it out of here. Yeah, this is pretty bad. Getting close to 60 clicks, no prints. All it takes is one good print and boom, turns it around. But This is an example why you should try this trick when you do a crafting run with a thousand ped just to get a good feel for it. Because if it's under a thousand you might just have a shitty part of the run and you never get to see the full potential. And maybe you just need to try the tip of the queue, so I find the queue seem to provide pretty well this run. Even got that 80 petter clicking the queue. Now I always thought to get an 80 petter like that, I'd have to be up around the T's. Oh, I never thought that the queue was possible. Whoa, there we go. Horny Devil, 75 clicks. Alright, that's better than nothing. Horny Devil print in the strip club. Imagine that. Yeah, why not? Finish off the crafting run at the strip club, right? That wasn't too bad.
That is definitely better than one of those regular prints. Alright, so after I finish up this crafting run, the objective will be to take the Sandrunner fuel cells and trade terminal them because no one buys those. If anyone wants to prove me wrong and they actually want to buy fuel cells, just let me know. I can definitely craft you up some anytime you want them. Especially if you're paying the markup. It says like the, the 120 or something. I was like, yeah, right. I can't even find anyone to buy any, let alone pay Marco. But if anyone knows anyone who makes Sandrunner and they need the fuel cells, just let me know. But anyways, in the meantime, I'm going to trade terminal that. Then I'll take the metal residue. And I was thinking that I'm going to put it in my shop for sale. And then if it doesn't sell in my shop, I'll just pick it up from my shop and use it for the crafting run. Whoa, we now got another print, sub warp. It's not too bad, 64 clicks. Sub warp's better than a regular print. Keep the limited prints coming. Come on, warp drive. Come on, warp. <laughs> or not warp drive. Quad. Come on, quad. I don't know why I was asking for a warp drive. It's like I don't want a warp drive. <laughs> Watch it gives me the warp drive. I'll be like, no. And then the game's like, well, you're asking for it. <laughs> now I keep hoping for the quad, but I've never seen the quad come from this print. The only reason I think it's possible is because it is a vehicle print. It loots vehicle prints, so... I'm pretty sure if you looted like a 10,000 ped Hall of Famer, it, would, it would, could have a chance of giving you a quad print. If Hall of Fames are really possible on this print. I never thought Globals would be, so it's wild that we got it on this Rock Tropia run. I kind of called that in advance in a bit, eh? I was saying that I was going to try to prove Rock Tropia pays out better loot. I come here and get the best Global I ever had. I was thinking for a year end show, I should do a year ender where I'm around sometime in December, maybe the last week or two. I'll do a video recapping the best of moments. Second, I'll put the ones from uh, the People Makes Games. That was probably one of the best moments of me. <laughs> I was thinking for uh, calling something in advance. Because so I was like, man, that was funny because I kept going on that if I made, made the mankini, that maybe it could get on the news somehow. And I kept saying that I was going to talk to some of my press connections and try to make it happen. But I failed at doing that. But in the process, I didn't even realize as I was talking to someone else in the... What is it? The... Not Twitch. The other social media platform. I was talking to someone in it and it turned out to be the reporter so I did end up talking to someone to get on the news and didn't even realize so another one where I did things by accident or backwards depending how you want to look at it it's the Forrest Gump way <laughs> So 
So uh, yeah, I don't know what other events I could put. Maybe do some of the episodes where I got different things for the first time. Different locations that I visited that were nice. It's funny how long we were doing the recordings for. I didn't really have a chance to do much of everything. Still got other planets to do the thousand cred, thousand ped crafting trick on. Show you how it works on Cyrene. Think maybe that'll be one of the ones we do next. Planet wise, for a thousand ped crafting trick. I would do it on some of the, every planet, but I know some of them I had horrible luck, so I definitely don't think I'll be trying it on Monria. It's funny, as I say that, I'm probably jinxing myself. If I would have went to Monria, I'd probably get the biggest global. <laughs> Now for me, in the thousand ped crafting trick, I always try to pick a place that has a lot of good vehicle prints. So that's why Rocktropia with the Bonzo Slim Jim makes it one of the best because it has a high markup. Say if uh, Next Island came out with a vehicle print that you could loot regularly that has a high markup around 10,000% that I would be doing it there. Well, I guess I did that one uh, zip liner or whatever it was called. So yeah, once Next Island gets their vehicle situation figured out. Arcadia, those drop ships, I ended up talking to Bones who has a drop ship and he confirmed with me that it, it cannot take people in space. He mentioned something in a boat that it would have been too unbalanced, so maybe it used to. That's what I was thinking. That could have created some of the confusion. Which I find strange though, because I remember when the dropship first came out, and I was going to try getting one to be try to be the first, and I remember the drawback being that it couldn't go in space. So that's why I was so surprised that everyone was convinced it could go in space. I was like, well, when did that come around? Maybe it was an update where they allowed it to go in space for a while and then stopped it again. Because yeah, that would have been a great name for a ship that could go in space and carry a whole bunch of people. A drop ship, right? That was a great idea if that's what their idea was. The only thing was is you couldn't loot the blueprints to make that vehicle. That sucked. Some sort of mission bound item or account bound. Yeah, so if anyone's wondering if you should pick up the, the Ghost Train Haze by color, ready to roll means it's already broken up. There's stems in it still. I'm like, what the fuck? Why would you give me stems? That's not ready to roll. You have to separate the stems out. But anyways, yeah, it's broken up. Stems are still in it. Kind of tastes or smells like cat piss. Or not piss, the, the litter. Like the litter box ammonia smell. But anyways, yeah. Potency wise, it is strong. That's what you got to give it. And it has a faint good taste to it, too. So even though it smells kind of ran ranchy, raunchy, <laughs> ranchy, <laughs> so I say, yeah, it's not that bad. Especially for the price, depending on how much it was. If it was the cheapest out of the Ghost Train Haze, then it might be worth the price. And just for, I guess, if you want to have a small package to store it in, coming already broken up, they, they're able to put it in a tiny bag. Like, how many half quarters do you buy that come in a bag this size?
The only drawback is the fucking bag, man. Trying to open it, it's a bitch. You might want to just get scissors. Unless you can understand how to read the instructions. It reminds me of all the products I buy from China and they have instructions. It just shows a picture of like a hand and then a number and like an arrow. So I guess there's, it's almost like a puzzle. You got to figure it out by watching or reading the instructions. It kind of makes it look like you're supposed to take two fingers and twist or something. Oh yeah, there. Did work that way. So take your two hands and twist. It gives you enough leverage to break it. Whew. Cat litter. <laughs> right, I've solved the bag. Twisting is what you need to do. Just do the twist. <laughs> I feel bad for leaving this crafting terminal, but I almost want to try one more to finish up the run. Where else didn't I try crafting? I think the one time for interest sake I took the crafting materials and went to the Arctic, hunt the thing. Can't remember, did I find a crafting terminal there? Maybe. Maybe in the armory base. I think I tried it there. Then I also tried it on the planet Next Island, or Next Island thing that he has on a Club Never Die Next Island thing. Yeah, it's a shame the partnership between Never Die and Next Isle never worked out well. Wonder what ever happened with that. Yeah, if anyone knows what happened, you can put it in the chat. Maybe I'll answer or read the answers next episode. Man, maybe before I leave this terminal, we'll try a full condition. Before we do that, let's get a me quick message from the sponsor. Today's full condition clicks will be brought to you by Crack Crack It'll fuck you up Alright, welcome back everyone Let's do the full condition clicks as promised I don't know, we haven't really got much to speak of so this could be the, the make or break moment of the run Usually it's one petter if we get a success. One petter on a full condition click seems a little bit low, but yeah, 111. Yeah, it's pretty bad. I should have quit right after I got that full success. Alright, let's try one more terminal to wrap it up. What's the best one we can pick? Yeah, does anyone have a go-to terminal that they like? Maybe I'll try the Tangerine. Or no, let's go into Club Never Die itself. 
To finish up a club, never die. Hang out the strip clubs, hit up the dance clubs. This is what real life used to be like. <laughs> Yeah, sorry for the game shaping like that. It's usually me. I shake my leg with restless leg syndrome and it shakes the mouse sometimes. <laughs> I swear that's all it is. <laughs> my leg is shaking down there, nothing else. All right, tip of the cue, crafting. And it's tip of the queue. As many times as it doesn't get success, sure gets a lot of near successes. It's like a near success machine. Yes, I don't think anyone's posted in the comments yet. What position do you think I should post the the quantity condition meter when I try the big one? Crafting Mania reward. Go full quantity. Should I try one at full condition? <laughs> if I do one at full condition and it landed on a success, can you imagine? <laughs> but that's just ridiculous. I think it may be tip of the queue territory. Now I heard some rumor going around about some guy who got the Crafting Mania print and he used it and got one of the all time highs or something and people are saying that it was so good that he cheated or something so I don't know what happened with that can you imagine he, he got an all time high that'd be sweet Yeah, that's what the Entropia official community like Mind Eric should do. Is they should do a best of. And then have people that recorded their own videos like recorded globals, recorded hall of fames, and they could submit them. So then Mind Eric at the end of the year will do like a, a best of clip of like all the highest globals and things that people got where they splice together everyone's contributions that got sent in. They make an official mind art video, that'd be pretty sweet. Hmm? Or, I guess maybe someone, a YouTuber, could do it. I would offer, but I suck at editing. The videos I don't edit at all are like the only ones that have a chance. <laughs> If they had a chance. <laughs> now I'm hoping I can get up one blueprint out of this one before a hundred clicks. That'd be nice. It's kind of sad to see the crafting run end. I was starting to enjoy just crafting every day. <laughs> 
Ah, uh, French pirate flag. French, I think that's a decent one. I was going to say I haven't gotten all the other countries yet. I don't believe I've ever looted the Canadian pirate flag. French one is a rare one for me too. Alright, let's check the status. This French print. Oh yeah, this one's a very rare one. Only 16 have ever sold. People have let it go for the low mounts, but I think I have maybe one copy of it already. So I'm not going to let them go cheap. So I'll try to get at least 20 for it. 13's ridiculous when there's hardly any that have even sold. Must well just give it away. It's not so bad though. At least they gave me a print at the end that I could sell for a bit. If I'm good at selling prints. It's not really the game's fault if you suck at selling prints. You can't profit. So that's when they always say a trick in Entropia is if you want to make profit in the game, get it from other players. And what's one of the ways to get it from other players? Make sure that you get loot that has good markup. So that's why if you're getting a whole bunch of prints with good markup as loot then you have a better chance of actually profiting because really I'm not going to profit at all with just the TT value even with a big global it's still going to be up to me to sell the prints if I want to make profit How much profit depend on how quickly I try to sell the prints. Sell them all fast with a cheap price. Hang on to them longer. Try to hold out and get the highest price. Sometimes holding out isn't always going to increase the price. So sometimes you hold out and it just keeps dropping in price. A lot of risks. A lot of decisions. Go strain. Go strain. Now, if I had to give Go Strain Haze by color an overall rating, oh, Rock Tech Lamp. Lamp. <laughs> it's not too bad. Now, I give it an 8 out of 10. I'd say if it was a little bit fresher and didn't turn brown so quick and maybe it was naturally darker I don't know and maybe if it didn't smell like ammonia and smelled a little bit more like just ghost train haze the ammonia smell is a little overpowering and it's weird that it's already broken up and have the stems in it I was like if you're gonna break it up that's not so bad but at least take the stem out like you say ready to roll it should have the stems taken out There wasn't a lot of stem in it, but there was some. Some big chunks. I was going to show the stem as an example, but I think I already threw it in the bowl. Sometimes I'll put a little bit of stem at the bottom to make a screen. Not really a screen to block it from getting, just so that the screen itself doesn't get plugged with oils. Two layers, dual layer screen. One regular screen in the bowl that's metal, and then a second screen on top of that is like stems. 
That's nice. With this vaporizer, you can't taste stem because it's just taking the vapor out of the plant matter. It doesn't burn anything. So you could do a whole bowl of stem if you want. You would just taste the nice clean vapor. Wouldn't burn any of the stem. Ghost train. Yeah, so that's Ghost Train by Color. Color Cannabis. It's the U.S. spelling of color. No U. Four thousand Canadians were injured and 75 died after driving using cannabis in 2012. But how many lives were saved by smoking cannabis and driving? The people going slower, more cautiously. Could be millions. <laughs> Could be. That's what I was thinking too when you think about that number. It's like, geez, only 4,000? Our country has millions of people. If everyone was getting wasted every day, and only 4,000 in a whole year were injured, only 75 died. It's amazing. <laughs> only. <laughs> Yeah, and that stat could be a bit misleading. How many of these people were just driving off a bridge or had some other person swerve off the road and hit them? It wouldn't have mattered if they were stoned or not. But they got counted in the statistics. Oh, gun ear print. Like they say, death statistics can be used to prove anything, right? Huh? Oh, another print. Monster truck. Monster truck. 11 pedder. Holy shit. That's when you talk about a finish to the crafting room, right? Whew. Now I was just going to say, the only way it could get better would be a Bonzo Slim Jim print again, right? Or maybe another Sleipner, but still 11 ped. That was pretty sweet for actual trade terminal value. Punching up that metal residue quantity. That should go towards the, the crafting attempts for the Bonzo, or what is it, for the, well, the energy source. So now they're giving us some prints to, to finish the run off, right? They must realize, they're like, holy fuck, man, this guy just crafted how many? 10,000 clicks? 200 to go? Sucks, I was hoping to finish the last clicks in this episode. We only got five minutes left. Come on, 200. It's not the end of the world if we gotta finish off a couple clicks tomorrow. I don't know what's my plan if I'm gonna stay on Rocktropia or take the prints to Calypso and try to sell them. I was thinking I should really make sure that there's no big events going. Or I'll check the price on the auction. See how the the other prints are selling, if the auction's flooded or not. If anyone wants to buy some blueprints to help the show out, let me know. 
I've got quite a collection. You can take your pick and I can try to cut you some deals. In most cases I already have so many that I should be able to do some deals. I don't know if I'm going to keep smoking the colored cannabis or the ghost train haze by color. Oh, steering rod. That was shitty. <laughs> or I might crack open the Atlantis. Oh man, I'm just dying to even smell the Atlantis. Guess it couldn't hurt to open it and smell it, right? Now I dream about growing all kinds 47 or all kush 47 hopefully one day I can grow it yeah let's crack it open now what happened yesterday I was going to bed for work because I had to work early been up since 4 in the morning and it was like almost yeah it was around 11 11 o'clock at night so I'm like way past my bedtime should have been in bed much sooner and all of a sudden my cell phone rings so I'm like, holy shit, who's calling me at 11 o'clock? So I'm like, ah, it's a local number. So I'm like, it's probably not a salesperson, so I'll, I'll answer it. Guess who was calling? Some random guy. And he's like, hey man, I'm on your front porch. And I'm like, what? And he's like, yeah man, I'm on your for front porch. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, I got a, a package for you and I'm on your front porch. I'm like, you have a package for me and you're on the front porch. So I'm like, okay, so hang up the phone. I'm like, I'll be right there. And I turn on the light and check and yeah, it's a delivery truck. Thank God it's like an actual marked delivery truck. If it was some random truck, I would have been like, what the fuck? Yeah, so the door opens or I open the door and there's a guy in a mask and he's like a government delivery guy. He delivered the weed to me. And he's like, I need to see your ID. I was like, I should have put the mask on just for a joke, right? Show him the ID and he can't see it because I have a mask. <laughs> what would he do? He'd be like, sir, could you take the mask off? <laughs> like, the virus. <laughs> No, so the government showed up to my house at almost midnight to deliver my weed. It was nice because I only ordered it like a day or two ago. So it came fast. Oh, wow, such a good smell. Oh, and a blueprint too at the same time. That was sweet. I can't believe how good they get this to smell. If I could grow weed that even smelled half this good, I'd be happy. Maybe it's the tin foil around it. Really makes a good seal. Uh, people make fun of these containers saying they're too big and they waste, but I've kept every one of mine. So when I give weed to people, I can re-gift it and put it in cool containers. People are like, all right, government weed, and then they go, oh, it's my homegrown. <laughs> See, this this company actually screwed up this time on the trimming. There's a huge leaf. Usually, they're pretty good at trimming. It's a good sign. Maybe I can get a seed out of it. 
My one buddy Frank was telling me that his government weed, he picks through it meticulously looking for seeds and he's already found some. So he's like if you want to get seeds from the government weed you can just keep a careful eye out. Always look for seeds. The only problem if you grow a seed that you find just in random weed then there's a chance that it's male. You'll spend the whole growth cycle wasting your time to only grow a male and have to cut it down. I don't know, some of these nugs are super green, then others are a little bit on the darker side. Very nice shape though. The pruning is only average at best. It's quite a bit of leaf on these nugs. Maybe they're trying to refine their pruning process. I give the pruning score a 7 out of 10. Smell? Oh, 9 out of 10. Maybe even 9.5. Right, I guess you guys can't see in it a little bit. Holy, they let you look right in. Disappearing nugs. So you got a, a brief look at Atlantis. Yeah, the taste is just like it smells. I've had Atlantis before. And if you're wondering the company, it's Hexo. And Hexo is the company from Quebec, I believe. So now, if anyone sends me seeds, I'm like, are they from Quebec? Yeah. Let's hope. Now, French people do a lot of things right. Fuck, I'm going to have to answer this in case it's a package. Yeah, you never guess who that was. That was that one uh, scam telemarketing call that tries to get you to send them money because they threaten that they're from the tax agency or something, saying that they're the tax agency going around calling people, telling them to send them money. Which is always funny because in Canada the government never calls you for that stuff, they just mail you the letters. So the idea that someone would be calling you about it, it's just ridiculous. So isn't that funny, in one hour recording, so far we've gotten two phone calls that were both telemarketers. One was uh, to get the ducks cleaned, and the other one was the, the fake tax guy. Does anyone else get those calls where they live? <laughs> Is it this rampant? <laughs> You're missing out. <laughs> it's like I should have added them to the show. All right, guess we'll end the crafting run at that. The biggest one, what was it? 11 Petter. Make that the title screen. 11 Petter at Club Never Die. That was pretty sweet. We didn't finish the crafting run, but by golly, tomorrow we'll finish. We only have 100 clicks. We managed to loot French Pirate Flag. That was one of the better ones. Monster truck, another 66 clicks. That's good. And gunier, 40 clicks. So we got decent loot on that one. I'd say we'd be pushing 100 ped with the print sales. Hey, Kevin's here. And Yuri. And Snatchbeard. It says I can sit, but when I click sit, nothing happens. Sit, avatar, sit. Bad avatar. <laughs> I 
Alright, so yeah, I better wrap it up. We're over the hour mark. Alright, thanks again for watching everyone. If you want to help out the show, you can do it with Patreon. Society 6 has my merch. Finishing quick is my specialty. Um, if you want, it comes on shirts and bed sheets. Very popular with the ladies. That same, especially. <laughs> Hideo TV is the one I'll pay to watch videos. Similar to like YouTube, except they split the ad revenue. Not just for the creators, but also to the viewers. Swagbox is the place where you can get discount shopping online. And when you save up all your points, similar to Air Miles, you can actually cash them out, but in Amazon gift cards. So that's pretty cool. Game Kit will pay you to be a gamer, but you can also do it through Entropia Partners. I got the links for both. And the free Bitcoin, it's the spin that I did earlier. And oh yeah, just click the show more button just beneath here in YouTube and it'll show everything, even my website. It'll show you the link for the Virtual Mate Sex Machine. It's for adults and men only, but if ladies need a sex machine, they know who to call. <laughs> At least after the lockdown's over. <laughs> Which maybe never. Now, and here's the actual virtual made sex machine. If you're wondering if it's a real product, yes, it is. They successfully sent me one. Haven't opened it yet, but it feels like a very heavy box, so I think there's something in it. <laughs> Now I'll try opening it one of these days soon. Right, and don't forget too that I got links to Raven Jade stuff, to the Entropia Zine, and what else? Oh yeah, there was another Entropia page I was meaning to link and I keep forgetting, so I'll try to do it this next time. Alright, take care everyone, and just make sure, oh yeah, if you happen to get any, let's say vodka, if you happen to get any vodka from the bar at Net Club Never Die in your vaporizer and it tastes like shit, give the show a dislike. I know some people like to vaporize vodka, but I think it's kind of nasty. Alright, so if that doesn't happen, you can help with a like. I really appreciate it. Just make sure you never buy the products from my sponsor because it will ruin your life. Bye for now. Really gotta check my shirt sooner for dust. You idiot! <laughs> Here's three things. One, subscribe. Later. <laughs>